Now this video has turned out to be a lot longer than I expected, but I'm gonna be covering some important stuff with regards to the CCMP Encore exam. Big announcement, and this is probably the announcement that most of you wanna know about. I'm now going to be publishing a CCMP Encore course full CCMP Encore course for free on YouTube. So from next week, expect to see Encore CCMP training for free on YouTube. I already actually have one video that you probably wanna go through if you're studying for your CCMP, and that's this EEM video. So you probably wanna go through this video if you're taking your CCMP Encore exam, but I will be adding more content from next week, full CCMP on core course for free on YouTube. And I'm gonna be doing this in collaboration with companies such as Boson and hopefully others to bring you more value. So I'll be using Boson software for some of the demonstrations and explaining topics using their software, use their XM software to make sure that you're prepared for the exam, those kind of things. Again, Boson do not pay me any money. I have never received $1 or one cent in compensation from Boson Software. I just like them as a company, really nice people, really nice to deal with, and they often give me stuff to give to you. So I'd rather get vendors to give me stuff to give away to yourself rather than getting money from those vendors. If you wanna support me, then consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, consider buying one of my courses. Now in this video, I'm going to discuss a bunch of topics with regards to the Cisco CCMP Encore exam. First thing is Cisco are supporting remote exams on the 15th of April. So last week, Wednesday, they announced that they will support online virtual exams. In other words, you can take the exam at home or wherever you are in a proctored environment. So someone is watching you take the exam. Cisco announced this last week, Wednesday, and I decided to take the CCMP Encore exam on Friday. So two days later, after they announced this, I took my Encore exam. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I haven't because I'm currently in lockdown in South Africa. Can't go out except for emergency supplies, groceries, medical stuff, and so forth, as I'm sure a lot of you are. So this is fantastic. I've been able to take the Cisco Encore CCMP exam from this room where I'm stuck and I'll give you my feedback about that exam. So that's the first thing I wanna discuss, and then later on, I wanna give you some good news about the CCMP Encore exam. Hopefully, this will be fantastic news for a lot of you. I've been asked many, many times, almost every day, David, where's your Encore course? Okay, so let me talk about the exam first. Now, if you think it's easier than going to a Pearson View testing center, I think you're gonna be surprised. The biggest tip that I'll give you is make sure that you're ready about 30 minutes before your scheduled exam time. What you need to do is you need to download some software on your computer, you need to run a test. They are going to ask you for photographs, like facing forwards, facing backwards, to the left, to the right. You're going to have to submit those photographs. They wanna see what your workspace looks like. You can't have stuff on the desk. They are monitoring you through a camera. So if you think you're gonna get away with stuff, think again. The mistake I made is I was putting my hand in front of my mouth when I was thinking. So I was concentrating quite heavily on some of the questions by putting my hand over my mouth like this. And someone came on and said, remove your hand from your mouth. Don't put your hand in front of your mouth. So they are watching you to make sure that you don't do anything that you shouldn't be doing. Now I did find the interface really good. It looks very similar to a Pearson View Testing Center interface. So the look and feel of the questions is very similar. What I really liked is I had an issue right in the beginning when I started my exam. The fonts were too small on my computer. The resolution on this Mac is very high. So the fonts of the questions were so small I couldn't read them. So all I did is send a message to the proctor saying I need some help and they actually turned on the, the audio and spoke to me. So I asked them my question, they answered my question and within 30 seconds I had my problem resolved. So that was fantastic. That interaction with the proctors is great, but just remember you're being watched the whole time. If you think you're gonna be able to look here or there or up or somewhere to 
see cheat answers than to think again. They're watching you. Now, getting back to what you should do before you take your exam, strongly recommend that you download the software 30 minutes or so before your exam is scheduled. You have to submit a whole bunch of stuff like your photographs. You have to make sure that the software works. You can use the camera on your computer, but I actually use my phone. I found that easier. So you can submit photographs through a web interface or you can SMS them photographs. You basically have to submit a bunch of information, including identification documents. So make sure that you've got your driver's license or your passport or some kind of identification before you take your exam because you have to submit that. Now you are allowed to have water, as an example, in a clear bottle or clear glass or something. So you can drink something, but remember you're stuck for your exam period. So let's talk a bit about the Encore exam. It's two hours in length. I had 102 questions. It sounds like that's what everyone's getting. Same on CCNA, same on Encore, 102 questions. There were no simulations in the Encore exam. The Encore exam consisted of single guess, sorry, single answer, multiple choice. So where you have to select two answers. They don't ask you questions like select all of the best answers. They will tell you select two answers or three answers. So again, multiple choice, single answer, multiple choice, multiple answers, as well as drag and drops. There were no simulations in the Encore exam, similar to the new CCNA, no simulations at all when I took my exam. Now that could change later, but I had 102 questions, two hours. I found that I had more than enough time to finish the exam. So I actually finished with quite a bit of time left but your experience may vary. I'm a very bad example of someone to measure against. I've taken many, many, many Cisco exams over the years. I'm a CCIE. So to me, a multiple choice exam like this is nothing compared to the CCIE. After I did my CCIE lab exam, none of these exams really phase me. My attitude is if you fail, that's a pain. If you fail, it costs you money. But just remember, you can take the exam again a few days later. So I think it's seven days later you can take the exam. So it's not the end of the world if you fail. And that's my encouragement to all of you. It's not like a university degree. In a university environment, if you fail, you may have to redo an entire year. We don't have to worry about that when doing certification exams. You can literally wait a week or two and then do some extra studying and then come back and take the exam again. There is obviously a financial cost, and for a lot of people, that's very high. So I don't want to belittle the financial cost of failing or taking a Cisco exam. But just remember, you don't have to spend an entire year redoing the content before you take the exam again. You can hopefully take it again a week or two later. Okay, so on core exam, I found the questions both good and bad. There were some decent questions. I thought there were some terrible questions. The difficulty of the questions varied from what I thought was extremely easy CCNA level type questions to very difficult questions. Make sure that you learn the new technologies. Now, I don't want to go through the entire blueprint of the CCMP Encore exam, but things that I remember that were important are things like SD access. Make sure you know the terminology of SD access. Make sure you know the terminology of SD WAN. Make sure that you understand the difference between, say, VXLAN and LISP. Make sure that you understand the differences between the different protocols used in these new technologies, such as SD-WAN and SD-Access. I obviously have a lot of background in routing and switching, traditional technologies, as well as Python. I found the newer stuff more difficult just because it was newer. So I spent more time looking at SD-Access and some of the newer technologies rather than traditional routing and switching like OSPF. But as an example, you will get OSPF questions. Make sure that you understand the different types in OSPF. Make sure that you know LSAs, uh, network types. Make sure that you understand how BGP works. Basically, all the standard stuff that you would expect in a routing and switching exam, I got asked. Now, again, there are newer technologies like network automation. Do you know JSON? Do you know how to interpret JSON? Can you read a Python script? You need to know those kind of things for the exam. But again, I could go through the entire blueprint and highlight options from almost every section. Because there are 102 questions, they can ask you a broad range of topics. So it's not like in the past where we had simulations and they might focus just in on one section. There's a broad range of topics, 
a whole bunch of questions from basically throughout the blueprint. So make sure that you spend time learning all the topics for the exam. Like I said, for the CCNA, I would concentrate on the newer technologies, network automation, network programmability. And actually, I'll just bring up the blueprint here to make it easier. So do you know JSON? Do you know Python? Do you know Yang? So can you describe high-level principles of Yang? Can you describe APIs of DNA Center? Make sure that you understand RESP API calls. And one I was quite surprised about is this EEM applet. Make sure you know that. Make sure you know the difference between Chef, Puppet, Ansible, and SaltStack. Like I said, I could mention many, many topics here. Do you know what TrustSec is? Do you know what MacSec is? Do you know the difference between 802.1x and WebAuth as an example? Do you understand different wireless security mechanisms? Do you understand ACLs? Can you work out ACLs? So again, I could start from the beginning of this outline and just highlight topic after topic, like first hop redundancy protocols. Do you understand different network designs? Do you understand the difference between different wireless deployment models? So, okay, I won't bore you going through all the blueprint options. Just looking at these blueprint options, I can, in my mind, recognize many questions. I mean, virtualization is not traditional routing and switching, but do you understand the difference between a type one hypervisor, type two hypervisor? Do you understand virtual machines, virtual switching, Docker, those kind of technologies? And as mentioned, do you understand Lisp, VXLAN? Do you understand the different types of data virtualization technologies such as IPsec tunneling, GRE, VRFs, MPLS, etc.? Basically, because we have such a broad range of questions, 102 questions, they can ask you stuff from any section. And don't forget wireless. I'll mention it here because otherwise people will think there were no wireless questions. You need to know wireless as well. Wireless is really important. The new stuff, wireless, think of uh, SD access, SD WAN, think of network automation, network programmability. Basically, study properly for the exam. Again, I had some very simple questions, surprisingly simple questions, I thought, and some difficult questions. Now, your mileage may vary as well, depending on your experience, depending on how much you've studied. Moral of the story is you need to study for the Cisco exams. I personally preferred the old exams. I loved the T-shoot exam that was part of the old CCMP certification. I loved T-shoot. Because for me, with someone with a lot of experience, I prefer troubleshooting a network rather than just trying to memorize things. I find that the new Cisco exams are more about memorization, which I don't like. I personally much prefer hands-on. I much prefer typing show run or show IP route or show something and then debugging or troubleshooting a network issue or configuring a network rather than just memorizing facts. So I think from my personal point of view, it's a bit disappointing in the new certifications. There's a lot of memorization. There's not as much hands-on, if you like, but you will need to be able to interpret output. And that's the one thing you must remember. In the new Cisco exams, you will, for instance, get screenshots and you will need to be able to interpret the output of those screenshots. So it's not like it's just memorization. You will need to be able to interpret stuff but I do feel that there's more memorization stuff. I think it's just me getting older now, more experienced. I prefer the hands-on T-shoot type exams, my favorite exam. That's my favorite CCMP exam. Obviously, best exam I think of all time was my CCIE. Very, very tough, but fantastic experience. Fantastic to pass that exam. So I prefer those hands-on exams more than just memorization. Okay, but in your case, moral of the story is study hard. Use the Cisco OCG official cert guide. I would strongly recommend that you go through that, even though it's a bit dry and a bit boring at times. Concepts are covered in a lot of detail in the OCG. I do think at times they cover too much. So don't get bogged down with all the nitty gritty stuff. Notice the keywords like describe layer one concepts. Describe doesn't mean troubleshoot. Here they've got a troubleshoot section. But you'll notice a lot of the keywords are described. You just need to describe something. There are some configuration options, such as configuring OSPF environments, including different types of neighbor relationships or different OSPF types, point-to-point -point broadcast, etc. Configure and verify eBGP relationships, that kind of stuff. But in my experience, I find that a lot of it was more described. Make sure you understand the concepts. 
You don't need to configure SD access as an example. They don't expect you to configure SD access, but you need to know all the different types of devices used in SD access. So as an example, you need to explain the working principles of an SD access solution. So know the difference between control plane and data plane. Which protocol is used for the control plane, LISP? Which protocol is used for the data plane, VXLAN? Make sure you understand that. Make sure that, it, that you know the different router types, different types of devices used in SD access as an example. Okay, so you need to study hard for the Encore exam. I thought it was an okay exam. I prefer the CCNA, to be honest. I preferred uh, the DevNet Associate exam, but this was okay. Um, your experience may vary. Please let me know in the comments below how you found the Encore exam and whether you agree or disagree with me if you've taken it already. Okay, so that was my experience taking the Cisco online exam. So big advice, if you're doing an online exam, is make sure that you download and check your computer before your exam starts, so at least half an hour before your exam starts. Download the software, make sure that your computer is compatible. I actually did that the day before, made sure that my computer was compatible. And then I went through the whole process of registering and sending photographs and I had to do it again. So I thought that was kind of pointless, but half an hour before you take your exam, you'll need to submit these photographs. So depending on how long it takes you, make sure that you start your exam before the start time, basically. So get things booted on your computer and ready. Now, one thing that's strange is you might have to wait 10 minutes before your exam starts. So you can't leave your computer. You, you, you submit all the stuff to Pearson View, and then you've got to basically sit at your laptop for like five to 10 minutes waiting for your proctor to come online. So just be aware, go and do all the stuff that you need to do. Go to the bathroom, get ready, get yourself prepared before you go through this online enrollment thing and submit your photographs because from that point, you're stuck to taking your exam. So it's a two hour exam, but you might end up sitting at your desk for much longer than two hours, might be two and a half hours because you, you've got to submit stuff. So 140 minutes rather than 120 minutes as an example is what it might take. I strongly suggest that if this is your first Cisco exam, you go to the Pearson View website, you download the software, you go through it and make sure that your computer is compatible and ready. Hopefully you're looking forward to the new Encore course that I'm gonna be creating and publishing for free on YouTube. I do have a whole bunch of announcements and surprises coming up. So make sure that you've subscribed to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you click on the bell to get notifications. And if you don't mind, like this video if you've enjoyed it. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best.